ba doom There we go. Let me make sure, turn the volume down before I hear a loud notification, which tends to happen on this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday. Product, productive Wednesday. You know I'm saying we're sitting on a productive Wednesday. There we go. I have a productive and hot Wednesday. <laughs> a little bit of both. All right. Boom. 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 There we go. Aha! All right. Okay. We're kicking it in. Uh, we back. We here on Wednesday. It's Kingdom class. We get to have some discussions about things that pertain to the kingdom and what God uh, offers and unleashes. So uh, it's always good to be here with everybody. Mark, good to see you as always, sir. Studious in the, well, your scripture, your bi biblical breakdowns and what God reveals to you. So our conversations be so rich. Uh, how are you doing this afternoon or evening, actually? Doing well. I've got a nice air-conditioned room to sit in, so God, <laughs> God bless it. <laughs> and for those who aren't in the Bay Area or where we are, man, it's touching, what, 90? It was like 96, 97 earlier. I don't know if it's still up there, but uh, yeah, it's, that, it's that biting straight heat that you want to make sure you're out of the direct sunlight. Uh, Midwest people, y'all do humidity. We do humidity back there. Here's just that straight heat that will make you question whether shade is real so um, we are uh doing our best to make sure we stay warm eating uh icicles and popsicles and such and doing well so thank you for joining us um this is our wonderful class on wednesdays where we get to touch on the just the different aspects of what god teaches and grows us to build and to be better not only believers but understanding how he functions so um thank you for being with us we were touching on um prayer last week just the persistence of it so we're gonna go a little deeper into that tonight so uh let's start off with prayer so in the name of jesus lord god um mm -hmm. we thank you for just you being the phenomenal god that you are the creator the uh the unique one the supreme the powerful the, the one who's above everything else lord you've accounted for you've called you've built so lord we just want to bless you today we want to give you honor we want to ask that you download into us what's necessary. You are everywhere at all times, and you're the one who desires to make yourself manifest in every present place. So, Lord, I pray tonight that we're filling you, that we understand that you are making yourself revealed to your character, your, your points of what you want us to do as your children, and calling us to live according to how you value us and how you perceive us. So, Lord, tonight, let us just soak up everything. I speak for soft hearts, soft spirits open minds. Lord God, let us be able to take in every component of your character so we can institute it into our daily walk. Lord God, sometimes we just assume that heaven is only when we make it past this life. But living in you, Lord, you supply us with kingdom resources and heaven's outlook. Even now, Lord God, we can live and operate. So we thank you for supplying us with a greater possibility than if we had to march out this world on our own. So we appreciate you. We glorify you. And tonight we just want to consume more of who you are and what you have for your children. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Woo. So, uh, productive Wednesday, as I was saying. Got some things accomplished and stepping into the newness in God. Hey, I got to ask, Mark, how uh, with our conversation last week, we were talking about our persistence in prayer. Um, have you had any instances in the last week where you had to stand fast, you had to stay continual in prayer posture, faith, hope, anything that you had to, actually the, the word that used to give me difficulty when I thought about prayer was travailing. We didn't, we didn't talk about that in detail last time but travailing in prayer, like that ongoing, constant, like, ah, oh, God, this is what I need. This is what I got. This is what I, I have to have. Um, have you had anything in the last week, month, or even this year where you had to be your stance of persistence in God? I, f I feel like I'm I'm coming into a time um, probably pretty soon where that's going to be the case. Uh, I won't go into too much detail, but um, I, I feel invited into a more um, – how do I say this? In, in, into a, a short season 
where the Lord's like, you know, we're going to, we're going to be very intentional and intensive on something. And so mm. it's going to require great focus and, and, you know, persistence is going to play a part in that because mm -hmm. it's addressing things that um, require persistence to push it forward, if that makes sense. <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> he gave you a heads up. He's like, uh, listen, let's <laughs> come down a pipeline. I'm going to need you to gear up for your prayer posture. Um, get your knee pads together. <laughs> uh, make sure you limber and get your prayer position solidified. Hey, Ben, you know what? I, I appreciate those. When you got a relationship with God where he can give you a heads up, that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> that is a wonderful thing. All right. So you got a season of persistence coming up. Amen. Amen. Um, I like, and I, I like from our conversation last week, we were talking about just the things that can impede that too impede our continuation in God and, and our prayer, our prayer points and our agreement with him. And it's even getting outside of um, what we're unwilling or what we have a disruption based upon what we did, didn't do our continuance. So um, as I, as we're talking about persistence, mine is not only persisting in prayer, but persisting to stay before him to grab the next thing he has in prayer. He has for me to pray on. So yeah, I, I'm already taking those prayer points forward. And we pray as a body um, weekly. So in it, uh, I'm making sure I'm trying to be attuned to everything that God's telling me so I can put that into the next place or next opportunity to put in prayer. So if you haven't stretched in your persistence in prayer, now's the time to do it. Go ahead and get that into practice. Let it be ongoing because sometimes it can be like, you know, you get to that prayer routine. And kind of like you pray on, um, on not on command, but like more of like your scheduled time prayer or your your duration prayer it's like a certain amount of time that you like all right my timer just went off i prayed for five minutes i'm good like that persistence grows and matures and as you grow in god your conversation with him will look different and then i'll I, yeah we'll talk about it in upcoming weeks i'm about to jump ahead um <laughs> so uh tonight though we're gonna look at um fasting with prayer prayer with fasting that connection between Praying and fasting in God. Um, many times we we learn about the the benefits of it, or we kind of look at a lens of what it could do. But in Scripture, it highlights intention. And then as we're peeling into this, I want you to investigate your own walk because sometimes you can take it from a religious standpoint, and it may or may not be beneficial. So tonight we're gonna kind of launch into that. So. First question is, and we're throwing it out there for everybody, Mark, we, we, we get to chime in on this first because we got microphones, um, but anybody want to chime in? Um, why do we fast? Mm. Anybody, anybody want to answer that one? If you want to throw out whatever thing you were taught, whatever you understood from your own reading, um, maybe if God broke something down to you personally, why do we fast? You can go ahead and throw that in there now. And then Mark, anytime you want to, you want to add in. If you want to jump on this one, go right ahead, sir. Oh, definitely. Well, I will. I will say first that th this has been probably the constant, persistent meditation on on this whole thing this entire week. Is why fast? Why fasting? The mm -hmm. Lord was like, in your history, why did you fast? What was the fasting for? And so I, I think what I'll do is I'll answer that from a personal standpoint. Um, when I, the first time I ever fasted in my whole life was when I was in San Francisco after I graduated college and was helping to start a church. The pastor there, um, instituted, uh, for his life and then for the church and leaders, um, uh, beginning of the year, 40 day fast. So from January 2nd till February, whatever it was, it was like, okay. Whatever you're going to do, you're going to do it. You're going to do it for 40 days. You can mix it up. You can have 10 days of this, 10 days of that, but make it hard. Make it like really, you know, just dig in and dive in and just go after, go after God. So, um, so why were we fasting? Well, first of all, we were fasting because we were trying to plant a church in a very difficult city. You know, um, San Francisco um, was, you know, not not the most welcoming place. I mean, I don't know that any place that is, don't get me wrong. But, you know, we knew that there was going to be opposition. We knew that there was going to be, um, you know, like if you're planting a garden, you know, it's like, it's not like your, your, your dirt is like perfectly soiled. And it's like, just drop the seeds in right now and everything will just sprout up tomorrow. 
we knew that nice. going in, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we knew that going in there was going to be some work involved. And so part of our work um, to prepare what we felt was to, 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 to go after the spiritual atmosphere of our city was not just prayer, but prayer with fasting. And so there's a key in what I just said. It wasn't just that we were praying for our city. We stepped it up a notch. To me, mm. fasting was, okay, there's prayer, and then there's stepping it up a notch. And so um, stepping it up a notch could involve a lot of things. I think if you're dealing with something that is persistent, if you're dealing with something that is perennial, that that has been longstanding, and you want to see it uprooted or upseated, you want to see breakthrough, you want to see, um, you know, just what what you know what God wants in that situation or that that thing. You you add fasting to prayer to kind of step up the prayer assault over that thing or over that place or prayer over that area. Like so that. so fast fasting is kind of like when you're like oh okay you know you know it's like I, I was thinking of this earlier as I was driving home you know there's there's people that take warm up shots you get on the basketball court you don't have your basketball shoes on you might be in sweatpants you might have your hoodie on you're just kind of shooting around but when the dude or gal unzips the sweatshirt takes it off pulls off the sweatpants, has the basketball shorts on, switches the shoes to the Nikes or whatever it is they put on their feet. They're like, oh, it's go time. This guy or gal is ready to throw down on this court. And that's fasting. Fasting is like, okay, you know, prayer, I'm not, and I'm not discounting prayer. Prayer is good. But when you fast and pray, man, you're, you're ready to go run and gun. You're ready to go full court, full press. We're going to win. We're going to go into this. And so for me, that's that's how fasting was introduced to me. Um, I would also be invited by God to fast and pray over specific things that he was highlighting in my life. So I talked about how for San Francisco, we were trying to break up ground. We were trying to like, you know, fight whatever spiritual opposition so people would be open to receive the gospel and, and come to church. But personally, God would invite me into things where he'd be like, you need to add fasting to this. This is something that I want to have. I want to give you breakthrough in your life. This is something that I want to cut out. It might be generational. It might be, you know, whatever. We're going to enter a season of prayer with fasting that's going to, like, really give this a good pounding. And so it's kind of a, kind of similar along the lines of, like, a step-up thing, but more on a personal level where God is saying, you know, this kind, like Jesus said to his disciples, this kind can only come out with prayer and fasting. Where, where God is saying, look, I need you to be willing to go full on, full in, because what I'm looking to accomplish in this short season requires you to step it up. Uh, I like I like the words you use. You said prayer salt. Let's get it like right now. I'm like, yeah, that's like putting that's like putting a hollow point in. Um, but yeah. no, I like that. I like the visual. And as you as you were talking, I'm, I'm going to add my mine. Mine was what I was taught was along the same lines of what you're speaking is like it's almost like an enhancement like it 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 adds to and it and that's why I'm breaking it down it is saying that prayer isn't like by itself effective there's times where there's something necessary to be added on top and so that enhancement um my, my visual is uh for all the 90s 80s 90s babies uh nintendo the first nintendo came out um, some of us were good. Some of us were not. For those who were not, they created a thing called the Game Shark, where you took this device, you put it on top of your Nintendo game, and then you put it inside the console, and it gave you cheats. It gave you extras. It gave you more you can do with the game. You might get a, uh, extra lives, maybe better bullets, whatever it was. It benefited you to attach it to the game. So that's kind of like... You could beat certain games on your own, but with that game shark, oh my goodness, the, the play experience looked way better. So um, in, in, in my walk in God, and as Mark was saying, I totally agree, there's, there's times where it's necessary to add to the prayers that you're praying. And in this, that, that fast that you have and whatever level looks like, for some people, a fast is like one meal a day. Other people, it's I'm not eating anything for like a week. And then, of course, you get biblical, you like 40 days, 40 nights, nothing like that's where you really getting yourself attuned to it uh, when you're in your fasting mode. But 
it's something that you're giving over. And the the key that I want us to grab hold of when we're praying and we're adding fasting in, there has to be an intended outcome. There's something that you're looking for, whether it's something that God gave you directly or something that you're uh, beseeching him on. Because in Old Testament, they had their prayers and then depending on the circumstance, they would fast on top of it. Like, nah, God, we really are asking for you to move. So to show you, I'm going into fasting, which is dedicating a time, food that I would ordinarily do something else. I'm taking that and putting it on top of my prayers and sending it up to you. So, yeah, I like your example about God had you pray and fast in preparation to start a church in an area that might have had some kind of spiritual dominance that God said hey you step into this this is going to clear that path this is going to clear it out had you just prayed you might have only got like one layer taken off but that fast added to a whole nother dimension and then there's a side where God will have you fast and pray for something that, that pertains to strictly you I've been there too where God's like hey you need to fast and pray you do this this is going to apply to you. So it's going to look different in different lights. And so uh, as, as we're walking down this fast, fasting conversation, um, for those who are novice at it, um, I can't say I'm an expert. I've done quite a bit of fasting in my day. Uh, what can we expect when we fast? What takes place while we're fasting? Oh, that's a good question. Fabulous question. And, and, you know, the thing, the thing about a fast, if you're doing it right, you're going to know. And, and, and so I just want to encourage you. And, and so how, how do you know you're doing it right? Well, for one thing, um, it, it's, it's, a, it, it's a personal heightener, you know, because when, you're, when you feel hungry, when you're like, oh, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not eating lunch today or whatever, you have a heightened sense of, you know, whatever it is you're going after in prayer, you know, there's, there's like, um, so, so it's like, like, okay. So like say, you know, and, and um, another good example would be like a, a pregnant woman, right? So like they might have a heightened sense of taste buds or heightened sense of smell or like after their child's born, they might have a heightened sense of, of hearing where it's like, you know, did the baby cry? Did, it, did the baby make a noise? You know, it's like, how did you hear that? We're like way at the other end of the house. And she's like, no, no, because she's got the heightened sensibility. And so fasting kind of creates this heightened sense. I don't want to say it makes you super spiritual, but it does heighten. <laughs> um, it, 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 I don't know. I, I, I kind of want to, I mean, we hear super spiritual. We hear like the negative connotation. But no, right, I, right. I, I kind of agree with that. It does kind of like, it <laughs> kind of. It wakens you, but no, I, I get what you're saying, but yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of agreeing with that. <laughs> if, you know, another good example would be would be Spider-Man, right? So he had senses, but when he gets injected, all of his senses are heightened. He can he can like you know it's like he just you know it's like that sixth sense where he's just like his reflexes and his reactions are higher. And I think Holy with fasting, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a Holy Ghost sense. Holy Ghost Honestly, Daniel. if you if you want to draw closer to God. If you want to pray the prayers that he would lead you to pray that will be effective and powerful, adding fasting kind of opens up what was kind of not blocked, but like a little bit more crowded before. It's like yeah. I could pray in my room or I could clear the entire room out of everything. So it's just me and God. It's just I, I can pace to any corner of the room and there's no obstructions. There's nothing getting in my way. There's this hyper heightened focus and intentionality. And you can go in with just a greater sense of like, all right, we're we're praying now. We're going yeah. after this thing now. We're doing business with God now. And, mm -hmm. and that is to me what I have seen happen when I fast. It just it just kind of heightens everything. You just you pray more fiercely, you pray more um desperately. There's a greater hunger for God, you know, where you're just like I feel this hunger, but I'm going to channel it into hunger for him. I'm going to channel it into hunger for what I want to see in his will being done in my life personally or the situation. And, and it just, it just, it just gives that extra force and punch to what you're doing in prayer. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm looking in the comments. I got people saying um, mental clarity, um, yep. the emptiness that's there, you allow him to fill it. So, Whatever uh, might have been convoluted or just congested, God can enter in. And um, also, ooh, I know fasting, it helps me hear God's voice way more. So, yeah, um, 
it's a boost. It's a boost all the way around, right? It's a boost because as your flesh is not getting what it thinks it needs and it's screaming out, oh, I'm going to die. Like, I'm not going to make it. You need to get, you see that on the counter, just lick it and I'll be better. Like your flesh is losing its control over you. And in turn, it's like your your spirit is more behind the driver's seat. And our spirits are already yearning and connected and desiring to be with God. It's our flesh that we war with. And our flesh is, it has a loud voice. Our flesh speaks very loudly. But when we're fasting, you're starving the flesh. And in it, you're gaining a hunger for Christ. Your spirit is like, finally, man, this is where I've been trying to head forever. So thank you. And as you go that way, you get quenched in Christ. You get quenched in God because he's supplying you what you thought you needed in a natural. And then on the other side is uh, your reception is bigger. And I'm not bigger. It's greater. Like imagine like if you you ever been in a place where there's like a like you actually, I don't know, with me and every phone I've had, every time I'm in Costco, my signal stinks. Like I don't care where I'm at in Costco. I could be back by the freezer. I could be in the front other section. I'm like, I do not have a good signal. It's not until I step outside of Costco do I get text messages and phone calls. Maybe it's my carrier. I've had two different ones. They do the same thing though. But when I step outside of Costco, my signal gets stronger. There's not so much conflicting with it, whether it's the metal, whether it's all the other people in there. I don't know how it works. But you get a clearer reception. And um Man, as hey, as as we're talking now, it felt like that last year when we were on the mountain, Mark. Like when we were on the mountain in Pennsylvania, it was like our reception was clear. And I remember the first time I went to the prayer mountain in, in Pennsylvania, um, God was saying that there's no disruption between me and you at this place. Like yeah. you will hear me clear and I will hear everything you're saying, like like magnified. Like there was no distortion, no disruption. It was a place that got siloed and created to have easy conversation and interaction with him. And so we'll get like that at times where our lives is moving so much and we're doing so many things. A fast will some shut down that regular activity, your regular scheduled programming in order for you to engage God on a deeper level. So um, I'm picking up from what you said, Mark, and also what they put in chat. And I totally agree. Um, we're fasting. And what takes place is we get a greater hunger for God. And we get to hear him clearly. We get to hear him clearer. And it's, it's definitely benefits to that. And that's what God yearns for us. And that's what our spirit is desiring. So expect that. Expect when you fast, if you're doing it. And <laughs> actually, you added a good point. If you're doing it right, you will see the benefits of being closer to your creator. Now, if you're doing it like haphazardly, it'll just be something that come and goes. And I, I'll be real. I know it, uh, what happens when I'm fasting correctly. I'm not only able to make it through the fast, but I'm engaging God on a different level. And so, like, if I try to fast, I'm out. There's times I'm like, man, I'm about to do this fast. And by, like, 1130, I'm eating on a Pop-Tart. Like, I'm like, all right, that wasn't really <laughs> under God. That must have been me because I didn't even make it that long. And then there's times where I've gone a week straight. And in it, um, I'm getting downloads from God. I'm getting conversational points that I wasn't even, like, God will interrupt my thoughts. And I wasn't even like, like the time that I'm like, all right, since I'm supposed to be eating from this time frame, I'm going to use that to pray to God. There's times where God is just be speaking to me throughout the whole day. And I'm like, yo, this is great. Even though I assigned this extra time for him, just because my spirit is in full awareness, he's dropping in whenever he wants. So expect that if you're fasting correctly, doing it unto God, you should be hearing more. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Hearing more. Yep. Okay. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, I'm loving engagement and people agreeing. Uh, before we go to our verses, I got, I got this question out there. Uh, what are some of the hurdles you encounter while fasting? So we, we can, we know what takes place when we fast, the benefits we get with God. Um, as we talked about last week, sometimes the things that kind of can disrupt the benefit of this uh, intimacy or a process we do with God. What are some of the hurdles or what things that may take place while you're fasting that possibly be aware of? Because there's somebody out there right now who may have never fasted or may not have or may not be sold on fasting. Um, what are some of the hurdles that may take place? Yeah. Um, well, you know, I, <laughs> I remember this actual one's a kind of funny one. 
I think it was one of the first fasts I did in San Francisco. I was working for a phone answering service and the, and the owners of the company were really generous. You know, they, they'd buy pizza and they'd buy different things. And I swear it was like the, the first, I think we started the fast on a Wednesday and it was like a Friday and they're like, it's pizza day. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, Today? it's a hurdle. All day? It's a hurdle. Uh, cause, cause if you fasted for any length of time, it, your body, at least my body, I'll speak for myself. Your body needs about like three or four days before it kind of kicks into fast mode. And I'm not trying to be a scientist or a doctor here, but I can tell you that by day three or four, whatever wrestling and, and ah, I'm going to bite my hand off. Um, I was dealing with from days one to three has kind of kicked into like, okay, I'm exhausted and you know, but I'm not thinking about food as much and I don't feel too tired. And I think, you know, whatever my body's supposed to be doing while I'm fasting, yeah, I think I'm getting enough energy and the brain's working, you know? And so, but it was like day three and, and, and they're throwing this out there and, they, and, and they love the same kinds that I do. I mean, they would put the, all the toppings on there and I'm just like, Okay, look at this. I can't look at this. You know, I'm trying to be spiritual, trying to have more of God, but I want more of that pizza right now. So that's a practical one. But um, the other thing is, is because, and, and, and I know we're probably going to touch on this in the verses, Jesus says that fasting is a personal thing too. I mean, yes. you can fast as a church, you can fast as a community, and that's a good thing. And that's, that's when everybody knows that everybody's fasting, right? But Jesus said there's also something very personal about fasting. And the personal side of it is he needs to know about it. You need to know about it. Nobody else needs to know about it. And so a lot of times the temptation is, well, you know, uh, I'm just going to go in there. Man, I'm just feeling like I'm going to drag. It's like, no, you get in there and you put your smile on and you'd be like, hey, how's everybody doing this morning? Got my water. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's like you that's really hard because sometimes it feels like faking, you know, or people say, I'll oh, fake it till you make it. But it's like really sincerely putting on the, I'm doing this. I'm not trying to broadcast it. I'm not trying to like get pity or sympathy votes from my friends or my coworkers who think I'm weird anyway. I'm really doing this for God and, and just keeping, keeping like everything is just the way it's always been. Like nobody needs to know just, He's the rewarder. He's who this is for. Um, and that can be hard. That can be a hurdle, you know, because not, not because we're looking for praise, but like, like I said, sometimes it's just sympathy. It's just, oh man, I'm sorry you haven't eaten for four days. Um, I'll go hide my donut over here. This delicious, you know, so. <laughs> um, right. Hey, I could, I could totally vouch for uh, what you were saying, even as like the hurdles that come. Um, when you're fasting or you, if you're doing like a longer fast and just like a day or maybe like just one meal a day, if you're going like no meals, you get to that place. Like I, I, I guess I, I vouch for that too. I'll say like day three, like with no yeah. food, maybe just water. Your, your body is like, it's like shut off. Like to like, like those cravings or seeking to like, Oh, counting the days down to when your fast is over. When you get to day three, usually that's when, uh, for me, and I'll say for me too, that's usually when I'm hearing God even more in like surround sound. And like, I'm not even looking for the next meal. I'm looking for the next conversation piece or the next connecting point or the next revelation. And it, it gets to the point where like, that's more rhythmic than looking for what's in the fridge. Like, I'll be honest, the beginning stage of my, my fast fasting days, I'm like, all right, I'm fast for two days. I'm already plotting out what I'm gonna eat when my fast is over. I'm like, ooh, that 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 lasagna on the second row. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap <laughs> that up perfectly so nobody will touch it. Like I'm plotting out what's gonna take place when the fast is over. And it was like fast is over at five o'clock, four fifty nine. I got the lasagna in the microwave. Like soon as five hits, it's like ding, I'm eating right away. Um, but as I grew <laughs> and matured in it, it was like, nah, there's there's more in this than just trying to wait for it to be over. And it's not like, oh, I fasted. I got my prayer request met or a thing that I was fasting for. Now I can get back to life. It's almost like you'll get into it and you will you can lose time. You can lose time in what you're doing because you're spending it in an enjoyable place in God. And so, yeah. And then, of course, uh, Margo's highlighting, expect those things that are going to deter you. It's almost guaranteed the day that you decide to fast, 
and you ain't fast in five years and your job has never done 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 anything beneficial on that day you decide to fast potluck uh the boss yeah. say hey we want to treat everybody you know hey come into the break room guess what we got for you all a gigantic chocolate bunny like it never fails but if we understand that it's 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 meant for us to try who we are through suffering in our flesh the benefits that come out with it and i want to i want to touch on as we're even looking at it just look at matthew chapter 4 and verse of uh, the first few verses and this is right after jesus got baptized right jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil after he mm-hmm. had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was hungry so the goal in this, and sometimes it's like, oh, you know, the devil add me. Sometimes that's actually the goal is for you to have to stand strong in your commitment to God. Like if your if your prayer request is something that you really want attended to, you're like, God, I'm gonna throw a fast on top of it. That whatever temptation, whatever freebie that people are throwing out there, this is an opportunity to exhibit. Like God, I'm I'm sold on this. I'm so committed to what I'm praying for, what I'm looking for. God, you said if I fast and I do this, this would be the outcome. So whatever thing is coming to try and get me to submit or surrender, that has yep. no way. It's because I'm submitting to you in the prayer and the dedication of my action. Like with Jesus, I mean, I can only imagine. I mean, we we in our flesh, some of us, me, I think the most I've ever gone is a week to go 40 days. 40 days and 40 nights and the adversary is intentionally at you like this is this was the holy spirit's goal like hey you need to go in the wilderness you need to fast but you also going to be tempted so this is a part of that plan and so god knows there's an enhanced that's there's something that comes with that enhancement so when we submit and give over to god we get to see an outcome because we're putting action behind what we're believing like let's be real like uh, and anybody, Mark, you might want to add to this. Has anybody ever prayed? And I know it's not just me. Anybody ever prayed a prayer, and you know your prayer was just mediocre? Like you ever prayed, like, like somebody, hey, I need you to pray for this. Oh yeah, I'll pray. Like you might say it in passing. You maybe prayed it later on or in a moment, like God bless them, and then you kind of kept moving. I, I'll be, I'm put my hand up. I put some mediocre prayers out there, like I wasn't fully believing in it i just said it because it was the right thing to do we do that in church services sometimes hey we're all gonna come together and pray and you're hearing a prayer request you're like yeah that's yeah i guess so and uh, god bless the people in another country like you say it half-heartedly like we're not even looking for the outcome for what god's possibly doing but when you're fasting not only are you turned towards it you're adding an action to show that this is where my faith lies in what I'm praying. So that's why when you're going into your fast, it should be an intention. It shouldn't be just routine. It shouldn't be, uh, you know, this is something we do. In the Old Testament, they had periodic times when they're supposed to do it, but we're still supposed to do it in intentionality and purpose. Yep. Um, yep. So I, I jumped out there. I've done that. Mark, you ever gave it like a, a half-hearted prayer? Yo, oh, man, too, too, too many times that I, I don't, I don't want to admit. I was just going to say, you know, the, the most the most half-hearted prayer you'll see is is the, the people who are asked to pray for the offering. <laughs> oh, 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 my goodness. Oh, man. That's oh, when I'm just man. like, uh, how's this going to go, you know? It's like if it's the pastor, you know he's going to be passionate, right? You know, no no offense, pastors, but but you ask, you know, so-and-so to come up and pray for pray for the offering, they'll be like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, Lord, open these people's wallets and their hearts to give. Amen. <laughs> that's that's the most half-hearted prayer. It's probably effective, but you know, somebody laughed like, "Oh, that was funny." I'm going to give to that. that offering. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but yes, that adding in fasting um, and what takes place in that process, it also is a relationship builder. I mean, if we think about Jesus in his fasting and his temptation. He proved, not proved, but he was proven in him being committed to his godliness. Like he was at a weakened state physically, had all the power in the world to do what the adversary was tempting him to do. But he stood firm in what he believed in his mission on coming to earth. Because if at any moment Jesus would have relinquished 
um, and submit it to what he was asked to do by the adversary or being drawn to do or persuaded to do or try to persuade him to do, um, all of us would be in a fold right now. All of us would have been lost. So there's that faith that's attached to it and faith looks like action. So if you're looking for prayer, you're saying those words, you're uttering, but when you add fast to it, that faith, that action that goes with it, that's when you see that enhancement. So yeah, let's rock with that. Let's rock with that. Amen. Um, I got two little quick points that I want to make before we move on. And this ahead, is just came to me. And, and this is totally God because, you know, God does the opposite of what human reasoning says is effective and works. So fasting obviously is, is, is uh, giving, you know, making ourselves empty. But in making ourselves empty, that's when he we invite him to fill, right? Mm. The other thing is we are intentionally making ourselves weak, but it's it's the position he wants us in because he's going to fill us with his power and his strength. And and um, you know it's like if you, if you're if you're struggling with something, you know temptation or whatever it is, enter into fasting because. The opposite of what you think is going to happen. Oh, I'm just going to be weaker. I'm going to be weaker towards this thing that I'm, I'm struggling with. It's like, no, by by making yourself vulnerable, by exposing yourself just blatantly into weakness, you're inviting Christ's power into you because that's how God works. He goes, look, if you'll be weak, I'll be strong. If you'll be hungry and be empty, I will fill you with good things. I will pour out my presence and my power. Oh, that, 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 I've never viewed it like that. And <laughs> I, I said this before, when you, when you, when you're a believer and you give your life to Christ, you're signing up for like basically craziness and radical, like nonsensical. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you sign up to fast, when you agree to fast, when you step into that, you're agreeing to intentional weakness. Wow. Yeah. Like, because when you're, when you're, when your body's weak, Let's be real. When you're physically depleted or weak, you have a tendency to make bad decisions or you don't do the things that you will ordinarily do when you have strength. I mean, look at just about everybody who fell in the Bible. Um, they had a moment of weakness and, and that vulnerability is where you can have negative things take place. But in God, when we're giving over to him, we're, we're stepping into weakness, nakedness. Uh, to be depleted in him, we're entrusting him to not only supply us, but it, it shows in a display of humbleness, it's submission unto him. I never saw fasting as that, but now I do. Like now as I'm looking at like in order for Jesus to be glorified and to be shown as the son, he had to be intentionally placed in a weakened state. And I'm just, as we're talking now, I'm just now seeing that he had to be tempted when he was at a weak state physically mm, man yeah. so that's that's true for us too so there's there's and and it looks different i i want to i want to be clear too a fast can look different for each person one person's yeah. fast from food might be no food completely whereas somebody else say if you do have a medication or you do have to take your uh you know what i'm saying you have to take your your pills or whatever for your body that does not limit you from being able to fast because your fast could be from social media or it could be from entertainment or it could be from anything recreational or it could be a modified way that you eat. It still is a way of submitting yourself to God and allowing that weakness to enter in and to give God place to move in it. So I want to also give people understanding those out there who've, who hasn't done it in a while or maybe thought like it's, it's not possible because of how I am physically or how my health condition is, there's still ways you can engage in that to allow God to move through your act of obedience and submission. So yeah, man, intense signing up for intentional weakness, man, that's, that's, that's in, you know, I'm, I'm looking at as hey, B and Janika adding chat. It's like, um, the enemy comes in, whether it's him directly or people acting up that's anticipated. Like, I, I don't want to be fairy tale with this, like, oh, you fast and you, you, you're feeling weak and everything's all light and fluffy. No, you're going to get hit. It's, it's guaranteed. Yeah. You're going to get hit because <clears throat> what comes from the conclusion of an effective <clears throat> fast and prayer in God, the adversary does not want that to happen. He does yeah. not want that yeah. outcome. 
he's fully aware of what takes place when we submit and we add action of faith and hope into our prayers. Like it, he, he's fine with us joining hands and God bless the children over in Afghanistan. He's fine if we can just utter that, but walk about our day. But if we're focused on a thing that we're looking for for God, if we're fasting for a family member, like, God, I'm asking that you touch their heart, that you give them a moment of vulnerability to hear your gospel. I'm going to fast for this week. Your mind is torn towards that. You keep revisiting that. So when that food comes that you ordinarily eat, you're thinking of that person who you have as your prayer objective. Adversary don't yes. want no parts of that. He does not want victory in that sense. It, it can be for you. It can be for others. He does not want it. So expect that to take place. Just want yep. to get that warning. <laughs> Heads up. Amen. Okay. It's, it's funny too, and I'll just add, I'll just round this off. There's been because because he comes and he fills us when we're emptying ourselves. There's actually I have found personally greater power in. Um, in, in fighting temptation. Yes, it comes. Yes, you get bombarded. But it's funny because we we're talking a, a little while ago about that heightened awareness. You're more heightened aware that you're going to be tempted. You're more heightened aware that you're going to experience opposition. And so, you know, like opposition or, or temptation many times will just catch us off guard. It catches us at a low moment. Well, the thing is with fasting, you've, you've already raised your, you've heightened your awareness. You've heightened that that spiritual sense. So in a sense, it's 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 you're more effective when the opposition comes because you you're you're like, oh no, I see that coming and I'm turning this way. You know, whereas before you might just be blindsided when you're just like, oh, I can't help, I'm stuck, I'm just gonna get bombarded here. Whereas with the spiritual sentences heightened, you're like, no, I see that coming a mile away. Nah, no, nah, I'm 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 over here. Jesus, I want more of you. And 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 you find that the opposition's there, but but you're like, wow, the, I'm tapping into something here. I want more of this, God. I want more of this. I feel stronger. It's weird. I, I shouldn't feel stronger, but I do. And and I'm recognizing the temptation a mile out before it just be right in my face and be like, oh, what am I going to do? And now it's like, no, I see that coming. Uh, I'm going to step to the right while it passes me by. <laughs> so 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 you're saying you you're putting yourself. In a um, in a in a danger zone on your own. Yeah. <laughs> but with a covering, with a covering, because it's unto God. This is not like, all right, I'm just gonna step back into old things that throw me off. No, you're stepping into God, and that will place you in the crosshairs or in the the the, the landmine field. But you are covered in God. You're covered in Him. So allow that to be your your resting spot of knowing that you're protected even in a vulnerable state you're just giving whatever safety measures you thought was on your own you're submitting that to god willingly and you're looking for not only his outcome to carry you through but what you're praying for and and actually i gotta ask a question so mark um and for those who want to answer um when you have fast in the past was it for something that you had specifically in mind on your own or was it for something that god prompted you to do you know, a lot of it was either, uh, obviously there was the intentional fast with San Francisco, but there's been many times through my life where I've chosen to fast. Um, I remember um, divorces happening in my family, and I remember a particular divorce in my family where it, it was just at the very incipients of what was happening, and I felt the need to fast and pray for the for the family. And, um, and so I picked a period of time, um, there was going to be a court date coming up. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to fast between now and this court date. And I just kept fasting and praying and just going intensely after what I felt was God's will for the situation. And when I heard the report of how it went, I was just like, wow, you know, because it was like everything that I'd asked for and even above and beyond. And it was like incredible. And then there was another uh, situation where there was a, a marriage that was going to split up because there was some infidelity and, and the person had moved out of the house and was living with this other person. And, and so I was, I was notified by family members of it and I was asked to pray. And I was like, I'm not going to just pray. I'm going to fast because I saw what happened with the other family situation that, that was going through divorce. And, and so when I went in after that, several weeks later, I was told that person broke off that relationship, felt guilty for what they had done, went back home and reconciled and reunited. 
Let's go. And, 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 and again, I'm, no. not, I'm not boasting on myself here. What I'm, no. what I'm trying to boast on is God and say, when you agree to fast and pray, when you agree to step up your prayer with fasting, you can, you can expect to see powerful things happen. You know, there, there it's, it's not it. That's why he's saying it. That's what Derek is saying. The devil doesn't like it. You will have opposition because the devil is, is not mad more than he's scared. He's frightened because he knows what God's going to accomplish as you carry it through and as God gives you the grace to carry it through. So, yeah, you, you got to go into it with a mindset. I see the result that God's trying to accomplish in me personally, or I see the result that God's trying to accomplish in the situation that I'm called to fast and pray for. And, man, something's going to happen. It may not be the whole thing, but there's going to be a breakthrough. And you go into it with faith and that that assurance that, you know, it's not just going to be, you know, stomach grumbling for days on end. It's going to be powerful and effective and change something. Mm -hmm. It has an outcome that's more potent in prayer. It has an outcome that's that's strengthened and enhanced and. The adversary does not want you to get to that outcome. So he can't interrupt your prayer. He'll try to interrupt the enhancement to the prayer. Yep. So I, I want to bring us to, to a verse that, that matches this understanding. And actually, as I'm reading my uh, interpretation, my version, I was it's in, it's, it shows up multiple times. And Mark referenced it earlier um, in Matthew verse 17 or chapter 17. We see the um, the demon um, who was over the boy, um, over the little boy who was suffering with seizures and everything that's taking place. The disciples tried to pray for him. Um, it didn't work. Basically, it didn't come out. And then Jesus uh, comes in and handles the job. Right. And so verse 20 or, or verse verse 19, then the disciples approached Jesus privately and said, why couldn't we drive it out? And Jesus replies, because of your little faith, he told them, for truly, I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Um, other translations speak of Jesus actually saying, um, I'll read in King James in verse 21. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. So the thing that I want to just kind of pinpoint, Jesus said this kind. Like there's something different about what was taking place with this scenario that this required something extra, something different. This kind what this boy was dealing with, what demonic forces were ruling his body, this kind required prayer and fasting. Now, prior, the disciples had gone out in twos and they were casting out, they were uh, healing, they were doing these things in prayer. They probably was feeling themselves a little bit like, yeah, we look, Jesus said, we'll do it, we'll do it. And look, it's taking place. Then they come up against this little boy. His father's like, hey, my son's had seizures since he was little. Can y'all can y'all deliver him? And they probably go into their routine prayer, and the boy still has it. They probably they might have gone back in. Let's let's grab his hands a little bit more firm this time. Hold, hold him straight. And they prayed more, and he still has the the sickness, the illness from the demonic that he was dealing with. So when he comes to Jesus and he asks him, "Can you deliver my son?" The point that they deal with, and Jesus addresses it is faith yeah. faith in conjunction with that prayer and fasting faith is that component that's inside of fasting and i don't want us yeah. to miss that fasting is mm -hmm. it is an action but in it you're attaching your faith to that action which coincides yeah. with the words that you're praying or the thought that you're praying so jesus is highlighting that 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 importance of us stepping into fasting there are some things that will not be accomplished just from the ritual or regular prayer this will not come about unless prayer and fasting are taking place uh, mark did you have anything to add on that actually i i was gonna i'm gonna um compliment what you said with two with two old testament examples um so if you recall 
Jonah was supposed to go preach to Nineveh and tell them to repent. Well, he was basically going to tell them that they were going to be destroyed in 40 days. God had already yes. planned this and, you know, whatever. What he didn't know when he finally did go was these folks were going to take it to heart and be like, we are going to, we're going to cry out to God with prayer and fasting. And, and you can read the account. It's there in Jonah. These, these people declared a holy fast. They're like, we need to get before God. This isn't, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pray tonight before the kids go to bed. We'll pray at the dinner table. They're like, nah, the entire of life has just been interrupted. We're going to be gone in 40 days, but maybe God will be gracious and compassionate. We won't know though, unless we give our whole selves over to this. And so they gave themselves over to prayer and fasting and crying out to God to spare them and, and repentance. And lo and behold, God's like, all right. I hear you. I see your repentance. I see your prayer with fasting. I see that you're real sincere here and that you really want to change. I'm going to remove the condition that I said, which was that I was going to destroy this place. So here comes day 41 and they're like, we're still here. And Jonah's like, man, God, they're still there. But the point being, the point being that, that, that they knew, they knew what to do in the situation. It's funny too, because if you look in Joel, when he sees the locust plagues coming, when he sees the ar army coming, he's like, he's prophesying, call a sacred assembly, declare a holy fast. You know, it, it was one of those situations where it's like, this doesn't just require, you know, a few, our fathers and, you know, you know, going to the confessional. We need to clear the whole of our agenda and repent. We need to seek God. We need to fast. We need to pray. We need to put on sackcloth. We need to really get serious here. And so in tying to what Jesus said, Jesus is like, look, some of these demons are weaklings, man. They're just like, they're so afraid of you that they hear the name of wow. Jesus. They're like, ah. And then there's demons that are like, yeah, I know Paul and I know Jesus, but who are you? Wham, attack seven dudes and send them away bleeding. And Jesus is saying, look, you're going to come across some of the easy ones, but you're going to come across some of the ones that require you to dig in with your prayer and fasting and saying, I got more power than you because I got the source of all power behind me. And if it means I have to step it up with prayer and fasting to knock you out, then that's what we're going to do. Hey, and I, I like how you painted that picture of like, there's times where um, your prayer is effective and there's, there's, there's don't, don't, don't discount that your prayer has impact. It has power, it has force, but then there's yeah. times where your prayer needs a shotgun level uh, uh, bullets to engage yeah. what prayer requests you have. And if we think there's just a universal way of engaging God's kingdom, we're going to be lost or losing out on a lot of things. If we just yeah. think that, oh, uh, you know, I just, I go into deep prayer on this one, you know, let me, let me pray a little bit longer. The action that comes with fasting is one of faith and it's one of submission. And as I love that example, as you had in Jonah, they could have easily been like, well, you know, Let's let's just pray. Let's really just pray. Let's let's have a moment of silence. Let's let's put a couple people around the clock to pray to cover this and we should be good. If they would have handled it in that fashion, I don't believe that uh, Nineveh would still be standing. They coupled it with action that 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 action that comes from fasting is not just me verbalizing it, not me just saying it because it I mean, we can utter what sounds good like faith requires action. And so when we're putting our action into submitting into God and suppressing what we will ordinarily do, this is our agreement with what we're saying, because we can emptily say things. We can emptily say a prayer or recite it, but our heart's not attached to it. Or we're just, we would love the outcome, but we don't really have to believe fast. It couples that all together. So yeah, if you're engaging God from different aspects. You have to be open to what's necessary. And as we talked about earlier, it could be one where God prompts you, where he comes in, you feel that nudge, like, I get that too. I need to fast. I, God's calling me to, I need to fast right now. And sometimes he'll give me the purpose for the fast when I'm getting that nudge. Then there's other times where you're like, God, I, I'm asking, I'm requesting, I'm, I'm imploring of you. I'm going in on this. So I'm just going to fast because I'm putting this before you. And I'll be honest, there's times where I've had an intention in my fast, I've gone in, and as I'm fasting, God's like, good, but here's what's going to come from it. He'll give me a, a greater output than even I went in going in like, oh, 
I'm glad you changed what I had in mind. So doing that, engaging God from that aspect, it's, it's purpose, it's intentional. And not only does it model faith, but we get to see the outcome that surpasses had we just sat there and prayed on the issue. So go back in. Um, and I'm not saying routinely. Uh, I'm not saying because I've been through those years where um, certain churches I'd have been at or groups were like, hey, we're going to fast on this day every week or this time of month. Not really having a purpose, just staying in the practice of fasting. And in the past, I thought that was good. Like, yeah, you know, I'm just getting conditioned to fasting. And then there's times where God come in like, what are you fasting for? And I'm like, because it's because it's Thursday. Like I didn't have a reason. <laughs> I just I just did it because that's what I thought we were supposed to do. And then when I started doing it according to what he was saying or what I was uh, feeling prompted or what I was seeking him, it made it more genuine. It, it made it like, oh, I, I'm fasting on those days when I was just doing it, like maybe every other week, every week. It was kind of like, yeah, I'll wake up, not eat go through lunch, wave at my coworkers, dip off during lunchtime. By the time dinner time's come, I'm ready to eat. Like I, I hadn't really given over to God. I was just going through the routine of it. But when we're truly engaging him and we have that desire, we, we're aligning with what he wants, we get to see the natural shift because of the prayers and the movement we have with the action couple. So um, Nineveh was a good example. Man, um, David was another example. He's he. If you go through the Psalms, he fasted repeatedly. Like, God, hey, I, I need this. God, I need you with me on this. And we know that David poured out quite a bit. Go through and read the Psalms. You'll hear the sound of his action coupled with where his heart was, where his prayers were. Like, I love I love the detail of David so much. And it's like sometimes when you read Psalms, like, this is a killer, right? Like, he, like really, like this dude is pouring mm -hmm. out and fasting unto God for the things that was close to his heart. And in it, yeah. God engaged him. For sure, for sure. Mm. So, yeah. um, actually, I want to rest there. Let's let's rest there. I think I think that's a good point. I think that's a good point of us understanding that the purpose enhances what we're doing in God. Um, we're inviting intentional suffering or intentional weakness in order for God to cover it. And we're, 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 we're maximizing what our prayers are unto our Father. So um, if you want some references, as, as we were saying, go to Mark 9, uh, go to Matthew 4, go to the book of Jonah, jump throughout Psalms. You'll hear multiple places where David had it. Uh, Esther, where she called for what took place for the whole nation, for God to come in and protect the Israelites. Go to Esther. There's different places throughout Scripture where you'll see people who had different um, purposes that they fasted unto God for. So it's not like a, oh, I'm fasting for this one reason. It looks different. For some of us, yeah. your fast will be for God. Hey, I need this thing in me destroyed. God, I'm going to fast and I know you're going to come in. And God's like, that was good. I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that faith that you had in your prayer. So trust that as God did in scripture, he will do it for you personally. And also be attentive to anything that God could be saying that he's laying on your heart, that he wants you to partner with him in prayer and fasting to bring about. And once he releases that to you, go in full. If you're not the recipient, still go in because somebody will benefit or the person who's the target or the outcome is God's call for thing. Like that's that's what's necessary. So keep that in mind, even though sometimes I know we kind of like, man, I went a whole week without eating and it's, it's ain't even for me. It's benefiting the kingdom and also it benefits. It will benefit you because you'll be closer to your God because you'll be hearing him more. You'll be checking in more. Um, you'll be turned towards him more. So regardless of whether the, the agenda, the purpose of the fast, whether you're the direct like recipient of the prayer, I fasted for people. Um, that that weren't even close to me, but I know that that's what God called for. But in it, as I'm fasting for them, as I'm praying for them, I'm also before God more, and He's talking back to me, and He's showing me a lot. So it's still well rounded that you will be blessed in it. Amen. 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 Uh, Mark, any points to add before we wrap up tonight? I think you did it well. I think that's good. So I just encourage you. You know, it's like it, honestly, if it's new to you. Um, you know, just pray, just say, God, how, how do I do this? You know, 
it, it's, it's always it's always good to you know start simple you know mm -hmm. but um sometimes you get swept into a really big one you just you just never know god might be like i want to invite you into this it's going to be three weeks we're going to do this and and it's going to be for this person or this situation or this result man just go with it so, some fast will be as much as a day some will be weeks but whatever the Lord invites you into, just remember that, like Derek was saying, you know, go into it with faith. Trust that his grace is going to be there. He He calls us to things that he empowers us to accomplish. So, so take that mindset with fasting. Yeah, it's it's difficult. Don't, don't get yourself, you know, it, no one goes into fasting going, oh, yay, no more food. You know, no one goes into that mindset. No but, more food. <laughs> you know, but go into the mindset with, yay, more Jesus. Yay, more Holy Spirit. Yay, more awareness and infilling of His presence. Yay, victory, breakthrough, you name it. Hey, yeah, hey, you know what? That's that. Yay, more Jesus. If you don't want to fast anything <laughs> else, it's a yay, more Jesus. You gonna get more. Put, put the yay, more Jesus up there. Uh, that's <laughs> the one. Yeah. Yay, more Jesus. <laughs> Somebody hashtag that. Uh, but yeah, uh, let your fast be one that's done unto Him, done in genuineness. And also seeing the outcome that he has in mind. So, Lord, we thank you for um, not only supplying us with your res resources, but an understanding that takes place when we give over unto you. I pray that somebody tonight that may have been getting spoke to, nudged, you may have been prompting them. Let them engage their next prayer and fast with the intention of seeing the outcome that you have in mind. Lord, let us not be fearful of any distraction or temptation that's going to come it builds us into be stronger in you. Our faith is attached to our action when we're fasting. So we get to see your strength exhibited even when we're weak physically. Our spirits are being bolstered up by you and we get to stand strong, not only to see the victory, but to see the outcome that you have in mind. So Lord God, it's a relationship builder. It is us turned towards you. It's our ear, our frequency being opened up to hear more. And Lord, just let us be able to Take in everything in a moment, Lord. You're accomplishing so many things from this action of praying and staying in a position of fasting, Lord God. There's an outcome that will be had. There's a relationship growth that takes place. There's an observance of your spirit and operation. Let us be able to consume it all and give you the glory. So, Lord, tonight, let us step into it and let us see your outcome that you have in mind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, if you're not charged... <laughs> yeah, they put it. Yay, more Jesus. <laughs> uh, if you're not charged to go in, uh, let it be a prayer and let God speak to you and let him guide you into that next because there's something that he wants to accomplish in your life, in your prayer life and your fasting connected. So uh, trust God, trust him and bless him as you move forward. Amen. So we thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, it's always a blessing. Uh, Mark, it's always good to hear uh, what God gives. And as we blend it together, what God's saying on both sides, we can see a well-roundedness. And then, of course, I love the add-ins of the people who've actually engaged in prayer and, and fasting. Um, encourage somebody who is fasting or encourage somebody to fast so we can see more outcomes that God wants to do that he has in mind. We'll see more Ninevehs be saved or uh, Americas, maybe. You know what I'm saying? More corporate or uh, national fast taking place. So let us keep that in mind and let us step into it. So thank you for being here. Join us, uh, men. Join us tomorrow for uh, Men's Coalition. Unless we got another baby Kirk, then it's not happening. Um, if not, we'll be here tomorrow. Uh, but join us on Sunday and just keep keep. Keep joining in. We got we got a lot of stuff we talk about here, y'all. We got a lot of things we're uncovering in the kingdom. So keep tuning in. If you're watching this on a rebroadcast, thank you. And I pray that God blesses you from what we're engaging in. And I pray that it enhances your connection to him. So as always, love you all. Have a phenomenal rest of your week. And we will touch bases soon. All right? Bye, everybody. All right. Good night.